I don't know if any of you listened to it, but last week I read you a book about the three ninja pigs, which was a different kind of story about the three little pigs. And here's another three little pig story. See the front of it? It's called The True Story of the Three Little Pigs. And it looks like a newspaper and it has the wolf on the front and it's written, it, the name of the newspaper is The Daily Wolf and it's written by A. Wolf. So that leads me to believe that this is probably the story of the three little pigs from the big bad wolf's point of view. Let's see if that's correct. The story of the three, the true story of the three little pigs by A. Wolf. <clears throat> I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault that wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. I guess so, because I do love cheeseburgers. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back in once upon a time time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar. So his sugar bag is empty. You can see he's trying to put it in there. And this is the worst part. Look at his sneeze. He didn't sneeze into his elbow. And where did it go? It's all down his arm and down the front of him. That's disgusting. It's even on his tail. That is just disgusting. You all know to sneeze in your elbow, don't you? Oh, just disgusting. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now, this neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on his door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into somebody's house. So I called, Little Pig, Little Pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed a great sneeze. Look at that spray going everywhere. That's disgusting. He doesn't sneeze in his elbow at all. And you know what? That whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there under the straw. So I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. I was feeling a little bit better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house out of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, Go away, wolf, you can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. And you're not going to believe it. But this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. 
Now, you know good food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better, and I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He had built his house of bricks. I knocked on the brick door. No answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. Talk about being impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar and he wouldn't give me even one little cup for my dear sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake. When I felt my cold coming on, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. Woof. Then the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pin. Now, I'm pretty, usually a pretty calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course I was trying to break down the pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. Do you see him? And here come the police pigs. The rest, they say, is history. There's a picture of him on the front page. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy's going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all the huff and puff and blow your house down and they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. The real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar. There he is in jail, and his jail master is, is a pig, and on his cup, it says pig pen. And that's another pun, because pig pen is not only where a pig lives, but pen is short for penitentiary, which is another word for jail. So pig jail, pig pen, funny, punny, punny. I don't know if I believe this wolf's view. Mm, sounds suspicious to me.